All right, yesterday uh, in California, another day, another court hearing, another pastor, Senior Pastor Mike McClure of Calvary Christian Fellowship in San Jose. I've actually been to that church before. Uh, They were fined $55,000 and uh, being held in contempt of court because local authorities uh, said that uh, they were violating the coronavirus coronavirus restrictions, uh, holding indoor gatherings. Now, uh, in fact, we're having trouble connecting with the pastor, but Pastor Mike McClure, uh, in fact, well, now we have it. Pastor Mike McClure joins us. Pastor Mike, uh, welcome to Washington Watch. Great to to be on. Thanks for having me. Good to to hear your voice again, Tony. It it is. I was just saying it's been a while, but I I was at a church, uh, your church, uh, a number of years ago. And first off, I want to commend you for for standing uh, firm, as a as a pastor and um, you know navigating this very difficult time, uh, but I was just saying yesterday you were in court found uh, in contempt of court. Your church is facing fifty five thousand dollars in fines. You said you uh, and it's a paraphrase of a quote you gave yesterday. Apparently that you know what the laws are, but you you know that there's a bigger law. Uh, explain. Well, I, I mean. The judge is, is not seeing that the church is, you know, allowed to meet. And he, obviously we've lost the First Amendment, at least in Santa Clara County and probably in California. But it's just being obedient to what God's Word says. And I believe, you know, Hebrews 10 tells us that we need to gather together as Christians, you know, and how much more, you know, it says that we need to do it as we see the day approaching, and that's the return of Christ. And they just see, you know, the Bible's given us all these great prophecies about Christ coming again and what the world will be like. And I just, I just think this is a time when we need to get together more than ever. And that's what Peter and John told the Sanhedrin, you know, is it better to, to obey God or man? You know, you be the judge, but we're going to just speak the things that we've seen and heard. And so as a church, um, they don't want us to gather. They want us um, not to meet at all. I think in purple is, is the state uh, regulation is, but we can't even meet. But, I mean, the Bible tells us that we need to gather together, you know, and, and that's what the body of Christ does. And I'm supposed to enforce, um, you know, social distancing and the masks. And uh, I just, uh, I, you know, you recommend it or tell people that they get to do it as they want. But, you know, I'm not a law enforcement officer, and we have law enforcement officers in the church. And, um, you know, they're not even enforcing these social distancing laws, and, and neither is uh, I have a neighbor who's head of a planning department in San Carlos. And, you know, they're not enforcing these things when they're asked to, but they can't because, you know, the Constitution doesn't allow them to do that in private right. businesses and all. So they want them, the owners of the businesses, or in this case, me, the, the pastor, to um, to enforce these things. And, 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 and if people want to do that, that's up to them. But, you know, I'm just called to be a pastor. I think you have a capacity, almost 2,000 people, about 1,900 people in I think you've been having roughly around 600 people that have been attending in-person services. Is that right? Per service. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got plenty of space there. Um, You know, some people, I guess, continue to watch online. What what gets me is this double standard. Uh, For instance, you get on an airplane, and I'm on one two or three times a week, and every seat is full. And it's for a lot longer than a worship service, unless it's a Pentecostal worship service. And, it, and, and so you're sitting elbow to elbow, um, but yet you can't sit in church for 60 minutes, 90 minutes um, without government officials coming after you and fining you. To me, that is a double standard. Do you have a problem with that? Well, yeah, I, I, I've been told by the Santa Clara County, County uh, supervisors when I went to go pray that I couldn't pray in Jesus' name. And they've been pushing against the church for a long time, and now they're inside the church telling us what we can and can't do. And the First Amendment says I have the right to redress. You know, I have a right. Give me an answer to why we can't meet. Because the, the virus is not its not killing everyone, and they have everybody scared to death. Yeah. And they have this double standard where they let, they let you, you know, even in our, our city we had riots, and that was fine. You can go down there and riot, and you can have a, you know— you see, they call them protests. I call us, you know, peaceful protests every week. But the double standard is everywhere. It's as if, you know, um, they let, 
those that they like get get away with whatever they want. You know, if you're in a place of leadership, if you're a mayor, if you're a governor, you can have a double standard and it's okay. But if you're a pastor or you're a Christian, you you know we're going to hold you to the full extent of the law. And that's the, exactly what I see. I think it's, it's persecution. You know, I don't know how to describe it because there's all kinds of small businesses are suffering and churches are suffering. But um, the... So you the double standards there for yesterday. Else. Yesterday you were found in contempt of court. You're facing fifty five thousand dollars in fines. Will you continue to meet? Yeah, we're gonna keep. I, I just can't see not meeting. You know, I told him this is what I see God doing in the church. We had you know fifty five people baptized a few weeks ago. We had about forty five before that, and. You know, it's kind of like the COVID revival. People are thinking about heaven and hell. They're coming to church. They're giving their heart to Christ. And, I mean, we have, I think, over $800,000 in fines from the county, plus now $55,000 fine from the judge. But it's like at the end of the day, the, the double standard, it's so evident by everybody, you know, that it's it's like you have the marijuana, you have the stores open, you have the liquor stores open, you know, you have the hypocrisy from the leaders, and it's just to the point where you're not help. I mean, there's the, there's there's not more people dying today of COVID than there were months ago. I mean, the curve has been long gone, and these tests that they've been telling and, and are, are spiking. Well, those are tests. Those are positive tests, but that doesn't mean people are in the hospital. But they'll say the ICUs are overrun. But the people in our church say that's not true, and they work in the hospitals. So you're getting mixed. You know, from from the news, you're getting uh, you know one thing. But the reality I hear on the street and from people in our church is something totally different. And I just see this as an attack on the church. I think what's happening is a lot of this has been building for years, as you know. Um, yeah. This has been a craziest year. But but the church has got to stand strong. My encouragement to the pastors out there is, hey, it could be, you know, when you get the million dollars in fines, you know, then call me. Uh, but until then, hey, please pray about opening up, hopefully, uh, if we have everyone in our town open and they, they couldn't fill the courtroom with all the pastors. That's right. You know, they're going to do this to everybody. And I, and I just think that's, it's kind of a selfish thing. Now you guys would open up, you, you take a lot of the target off of me, but the truth is people want to hear the gospel. Yeah. They want to hear, I had a guy yesterday from the media saying, I want to hear more. You know, he asked a lot of questions and he would sat there and listen to me without yelling back, you know, for the first time they're actually, even the media people are listening. Well, that's when you know it's serious, when the media actually is listening. Uh, Pastor Mike McClure, thank you for being obedient. Thank you for being bold in in facing the consequences uh, that come with following Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll be praying for you and hope to see you real soon uh, out there in California. We're looking forward to having you. Thank you, Tony, for all that you do. And thank thank, uh, everyone there at FRC. You guys are awesome. All right. Thank you, Pastor Mike.